You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 2nd, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from Cornfield Resistance Headquarters, where you never know if you're still in the Midwest until you check in with the New York Times. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. You're sitting in the other room, so you might be in the Midwest and I might not be. <laughs> well, and there goes our New York Times sponsorship. I ran out to tell my wife. I said, I don't want to make a big deal of this. I, w- I just want to present it without comment. And uh, the Pod Save America boys are now proudly sponsored by the New York Times. Right. So that was like a, a little chef's kiss. On, a of course chef's you are. kiss. Now, you know, of course you are. no criticism there on our no. team. Sure. Yeah. And... Uh, Congratulations on that paycheck, because you know, yeah. no, we're, we're glad you're getting it. We're still working on the penny saver. Um, <laughs> we're pretty sure we can get him our put marketing a, director is yeah. working on the penny saver and seeing if they'll sponsor our show. <laughs> yeah, are you looking for a week old ninety nine cent a pound hamburger? It's very lean. This is the this is the ground meat, whatever it is, recommended by the Professional Left Podcast. Um, there's there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of that level, ma- you know, actually, we do have a lot of magazines in town that are pick up and grab, grab and go. Yeah, sure. Half of which are like gun fancier magazines. Really? Which really? I really don't think is is for me. Used gun um, sale marketing. Yeah. Under the wire, the for sure. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. you know, no no background check necessary. Just just yeah. uh, answer my, Come on down. my ad in the uh, grab and go at the grocery store. And uh, you can buy any gun you want. Absolutely crazy. There's there's always an article about, you know, how your rights are uh, being trampled on Mm -hmm. or about to be trampled on or have been trampled on. And that's why you have no guns left because liberals came and took them all during the Obama administration. Yeah. There's also big money in town if you want to work for the Illinois Policy Institute, (laughs) which we don't. (laughs) And and there's a letter. There's a letter we should talk about today's local paper since it finally arrived this morning. Yes. Uh, There is a letter to the editor. Uh, yes, there in is. In today's paper about Rodney uh-huh. Davis, our Republican congressman, he is apparently using campaign staffers to write letters to the editor without noting that yeah. I have a long paid relationship with the Rodney Davis for Congress. Yes, he is. Campaign. I'm just a, I'm just a citizen, just like yourself. And I would like to I'm say just, uh, that Rodney uh, Davis's uh, opponent is not an honest person. No, she Sincerely takes money yours, from Indiana. Average citizen, not yeah, at all connected yeah. with the Rodney Davis campaign. Oh, wait. So my name's Jim. I'm a beet farmer, and I want to tell you a lot about Rodney Davis, who I love <laughs> No, you're and, not. Oh, no, and and in among between listening to podcasts and generally listening to everything going on in the world. I wrote a, a movie review this yes, week about did. once upon a time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So I try to be everywhere all the time. Um so we're we're driving around. A little bit. I took my wife out for a little bit of cake and coffee. Mm-hmm. And we listened to a local radio station, Jim Leach on the local radio station. The sole liberal voice anywhere, as far as I can tell, between in, in this tri-state area on AM radio. Uh, he's on for a couple of hours in the afternoon. He's a nice guy. He's everywhere. He does. He's in, he's in local drama groups. He does uh, trivia night calls. He does all those things. He's, he's a very nice guy. But he was interviewing, uh, I think it was Rodney Davis. But talking about remember last time you ran and you had um campaign staffers sneaking into Betsy Dirksen events disguised as reporters mm-hmm. and Rodney Davis said, oh yeah well I disavow all of that I would you know well yeah but didn't your campaign manager tell them to do that well yeah but we don't uh, approve of that we're against that are you do you trust your campaign manager that won't use your staff as stealth attack dogs for, oh, yeah, no, we got all that covered. So this week it's like, hey, guess guess who's writing the letters to the editor? Oh, yeah, Rodney Davis staff. Right, and pretending they're so, average citizens. And not only that, yes. but brazenly suggesting that the other candidate is not honest. Right. In well, your letter. Money from while you're posing God, as an average citizen when you're a campaign staffer. Yeah. Director of Outreach, I think, was his title. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, 
most of the letters to the editor in our book paper are from crackpots. <laughs> Unless your wife writes them. My wife writes brilliant letters I to the do. editor. She's and, a great and writer. And we've had some podcast well. listeners sending us their letters to the editor this week. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you get them out to the newspaper. We appreciate reading them, but really you want to post those where lots and lots of people can read them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not in our paper, which lots and lots of people don't read. Yeah. Today, next to that article was some guy saying, why do Democrats hate America? Yeah. <laughs> why do Democrats only want illegals? Right. Why illegals and then abortion? And he, and, it's, it's, and he recognized the guy's name. Oh, it's the same nut job. And they, you know, they have a monthly schedule. Right. And right. the editor of the, the editor of the paper said, yeah, we know these people. And there's a policy you don't get more than once a month, but these guys are on a yeah. schedule. Every yeah. month, there's another letter from the same group of crackpots. Uh, and if you go to the actual, um, across the page, to the actual editorial section, you'll see a long article from the American Enterprise Institute about why deficits are bad, <laughs> and which is which is standing directly above a long editorial by Hugh Hewitt about who the fuck knows. Oh, I read that. No, the Hugh um, Hewitt was about... See, oh, senior housing, wasn't it? Well, it pretended to be about senior housing. What was it really yeah. about was people who have more money in 401ks than they have owed on their house. And why shouldn't mm -hmm. we let people take senior citizens, take money out of their 401ks tax-free to pay off their mortgages? Uh, sure. <laughs> and like, who's, who's the senior citizen that has that problem? And that's the, re that's the really important one to solve. When you've got so much money in your 401k that you could pay off your house, but you're yes. not going to do it because of the tax implications. So right. let's get Congress to, That's... and he really, his whole argument is Congress must fix this problem for senior citizens. This is citizens. the real problem. <laughs> this is the real problem. There, now, there is an actual homeless problem sure. in Springfield. There's an actual quality there's, housing coalition a, that was working on these problems. There's a serious problem with people who have zero money. And have money yeah. in their houses and are getting taken advantage of by banks, uh, yeah. you know, via the reverse mortgage situation where the wife is taken off the deed of the house when that right. happens. And then husband dies and, and wife thinks, well, I can continue to pay off this loan. And mm -hmm. no, you can't. The bank owns your house and you don't. And you're yeah. a widow. But if you, you live you're a new the... widow, but you don't own your house anymore. Yeah. But if you live in the in the posh suburb of Panther Creek, you don't want to hear about that <laughs> shit. That's right. Man, you mean Panther Creek Country Club di subdivision? Yes, Country right. Club, right. That's the very one. <laughs> you want to hear about all this money I have just sitting there uh, that I can't touch for tax reasons, and I've got a second or third uh -huh. house I want to pay off. And what am I? What am I supposed to do, Hugh Hewitt? Well, let's get Congress to get on that because right. that really is the most right. important problem in America. That's what you get. Oh, by the way, headline of our local paper today: literal headline. Steve Scalise to speak at Illinois State yeah. Fair. And not, that's it. So, not to, I don't want to diminish Steve Scalise's suffering. He was shot at the baseball game. He was. Uh, and Rodney Davis and no one helped be, him, ever. you know, get yes, to medical care. And I'm sure that bonded their relationship. Uh, you know, they were both at mm -hmm. that baseball game where a gunman uh, attacked them, open fired open on, fire Republicans. on Republicans. And to not have that kind of fear for anyone. Uh, but for Steve Scalise to then headline Republican Day at the <laughs> Illinois State Fair is uh, kind of yeah. a hoot. So shall we talk about the Mueller hearings or do you want to talk about the debates? Because you know what? Those two things happened back to back and they in no way overlapped or touched in any way. You would think that the president of the United States being credibly charged with being under under foreign influence, foreign uh, powers, fucking with our election, um, uh, obstruction of justice. Would be more than a two-week news story. <laughs> well, yeah, it would be more than a one-week news story. Uh, yeah, because suddenly, well, we got debates and we want to you know, put red ants and black ants in a jar Honestly. and have them fight. So, And pretty much nothing that was mentioned in the Mueller hearing was mentioned in the debate. Remarkable. Which is very weird. Uh, and yeah. the other thing that is newsworthy regarding the Mueller hearings is that as of today, uh -huh. more than 50 percent of the House Democrats are in favor of a peach impeachment yes. inquiry. Yes. Uh, so we have reached that magic yes. number and it's up to uh, the I guess the, the House Judiciary Committee is simply going to take on that mantle and conduct an impeachment inquiry. I guess they are. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I think that's what the the, the, the sentiment that's what they is. They filed with the court. So we are conducting a we're quietly conducting conducting an impeachment inquiry, which is exactly the opposite of the Benghazi show trials. Uh huh. This is not being you know marched through the streets parade style and bragging we're going to bring down Hillary's numbers by putting on a show trial that we right. know is bullshit. This is actual. These are actual grown ups trying to figure out what to do about this criminal and his criminal enterprise in the White House. Right. And the and I, the smartest thing I heard this week, which I can't, I wish I could attribute it. It's probably from four or five different people. Is the reason you want to run impeachment hearings next year mm -hmm. is you want them to run right up against the election, and you want because they're going to die in the Senate. Everyone knows that, right? But you want the issue to be: wait a minute, how are you not? conducting a trial in the Senate, a removal trial in the Senate, when this overwhelming wash of evidence says that this guy's guilty. Make that the issue. Make Mitch McConnell's criminal complicity with Donald Trump the issue. Mm -hmm. Make him mm -hmm. driving the goddamn getaway car the central campaign issue of next year. Right. And right. that's that's a uh, that's a perfectly that's a, a strategy that requires patience. And I it, it irritates that shit out of me. Uh, but, you know, I can see. I can see the purpose of it. Um, has, has anything caught on this election season faster and harder than Moscow, Mitch? No, no. And for that, and we, I have to thank, Joe Scarborough. we have to thank Joe Scarborough for that. Yeah, yep. it's, it now, hurts me to do it, but yeah. It sticks. Oh, no, yeah. he, credit where it's due. He, that, that's, that will hit and that's stuck and that will stick and that's not going anywhere. And that's going to become something. Well, that's now something that Mitch McConnell took to the uh, floor of the Senate to complain about, which right. Mitch McConnell never does, because Mitch McConnell just sits in the back and kills anything that comes his way and doesn't talk about it. And whenever he gets any questions, which is almost never, he just issues a statement about Democrats hate America, Democrats despise America, the radical left, and he walks away with mm -hmm. no follow up questions from whoever the hell the children are who have microphones in their hand. Um, it's always in the same position. It's always the same tone of voice. Uh, it's impossible to rattle him because he knows his job. His job is to kill anything Democrats try to do and blame Democrats for everything. And the other thing that was demonstrated this week, which was also demonstrated very clearly last week, is that um, this is the, both in the debates and the post-debate spinning. The media has learned absolutely nothing <laughs> from 2016 yep. Yep. at all. They have learned, they have taken no lessons away from how uh, wretchedly they covered the presidential election last time. Absolutely. And uh, and it's, it's they stunning. also really, truly do not want any more health care reform no. on a national well, level that's pretty clear. at all. Yeah. Uh, for them, change is radical and uh, dangerous and, and, and socialist, right? Right. Any change at all from the status quo is a socialist threat to their well-being. Right. Right. And that is cool. That was how, how most of the questions were framed. Mm -hmm. um, basically, how have you stopped beating your health care system yet? Mm -hmm. have you, you know, have, why do you want to kick uh, all these people off their health care and drive them into the in, into the sea? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you why are you putting your radical socialist agenda ahead of, ahead of the good of the American people? Right. You have 30 seconds to answer. Blue gal, go. Uh -huh. yeah. And, yeah. and we'll pitch a third of these questions to John Delaney and he will just stand there and blink rapidly and talk about the market. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and the good news is that uh, it, John Delaney was reduced to ash by uh, Elizabeth Warren in about in he her was. thirty second answer. <laughs> so the Delaney mentum that is being manufactured by the media looks suspiciously like the Centaurum mentum. Yes, right. Um, from years gone by, where look, he's not obviously crazy. He he is he carries most of our values in his back pockets. We don't want the crazy socialists who are going to raise our taxes to give stuff to other people. Um, to to have any quarter at all ever in these debates. So we're just going to push him and push him and push him. Well, because and... everyone on that stage who's not running for president and John Delaney uh -huh. own pharma stocks. Yes, they do. And depend on pharma advertising. Mm -hmm. I was very grateful to Bernie Sanders I for bringing yep. up. You're going to have America's pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. advertising on this debate. And lo and behold, yeah, they sure did. Not. Yeah. And it was just that. I mean, Bernie did very well. Yes, he did. Um, and Elizabeth Warren did very well. And they didn't go after each other, which no. was was a good thing. I mean, no. just stand stand tall for what you believe in. But if I and, may, if I may make one radical uh, observation. Yeah. The real winner in this debate was America. No, America. No, no, no. The America <laughs> screwed in this debate. It was just it was a horrible, horrible format. 
the questions were all tilted to one end. Um, the, the answers were just, you know, you have 30 seconds go. It was just dumb and awkward and, and the pacing was stupid, but the real winner, the real winner was, uh, Barack Obama. Yeah. Uh, Barack Obama yeah. won the debates because the democratic party now believes healthcare is a basic human right. And, and I want to say something in defense of these debates too. It was for me yes. so refreshing to listen to adults discuss how we get to a shared goal of universal coverage and lowering costs and have interfamily strong from the, from your own standpoint of what will work and what won't yep. discussion and debate about health care. Yes. As opposed to hearing the so-called president of the United States saying, the blacks love me. They all called me on my personal number. Blacks all love me. They just love me. <laughs> they love me. All the blacks, except for Will Hurd, who doesn't love me, but he's not a real Republican anymore. And all of a sudden you have these actual, I mean, and yes, there are exceptions on that stage. We all know who they are. But when you have people who, and I, and I, I include Joe Biden in this as well. If you look at Harris and Biden and Warren and Sanders, those four have all come out with health care plans. Uh-huh. And if yeah. and if the I, if you put the four of them in the room and said, okay, in 24 hours, you got to come up with something that's going to pass the Congress and in 2021, and whatever comes out of yeah. that is going to be so much better, A, than what we have, and B, than whatever, it's going to be, it's going to be what Donald Trump promised in 2016, is what it's going to be. <laughs> I, I know, I know. But the idea that we've gone from having a um, government option being sort of a wild lefty idea to being the bare minimum yeah. is wonderful. That's wonderful. That's amazing. That's amazing progress. Stop for a minute and think about how far this discussion has gone in four years. Right. And think of how many people lost their their seat in the House and knew they were going to lose their seat because they took that vote. Think of how many how many Democrats embarrassed themselves and made me ashamed to be a Democrat for running away from right. the right. health care as an issue when Barack Obama was fighting for it. Think of all the people who shit all over him because he couldn't force blue dog Democrats yeah. To become blue, solid blue socialists overnight because they're never going to do it. And all of the people who had veto power, chokehold power, and and poison pill power over every step in the process. Now, it, I I agree with the goal, but shaking your finger and say, we're going to have a revolution is not an answer to that problem. Well, that's it. It's inspirational, and that's what the president has to be. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so I am thrilled that we have a bunch of Democrats who all agree that health care is a human right. That the current system is a is an improvement over the old one, but still sucks ass, and it needs to be improved markedly. And that I agree with Elizabeth Warren. Why are you running for president to say what you can't do and what you won't fight for? Right. That's nuts. Yep. That's not why anyone should run for president. You run for president to put men on the moon, <laughs> not mm-hmm. to explain why right. you can't do that and why it'll never happen. Right. Right. And that's right. and and to say, and again, I agree with her to say, I'm not afraid. I'm not that afraid. That was the best line, and I didn't get as much play as I no. really wanted it to. No. When she looked at the camera and said, I'm not afraid, women across the country cheered. They did. Uh, In my house, they did. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not afraid. That mm-hmm. is key to this, to winning this, for sure. And and the uh, reaction, the reaction from all of the never Trumpers and all of the pundits and all of the, you know, slow down, don't run with scissors, don't go too fast, don't do anything. Don't do anything. Don't do anything that would, would offend the sensibilities of Tom Friedman. Mm-hmm. Everyone's mm-hmm. that is born out of terror, uh, of a cringing, residual 30 year beltway reflex of any time Republicans, you know, jump at you, you flinch and hide in the corner. And that is a, a reflex that the beltway media will have until they die. And the only way to do that, I I will repeat myself now, is to make sure the Beltway media is more afraid of liberals than they are of conservatives. All right. I'm going to read a quote to you from um, David Brooks' op-ed, basically endorsing Marianne Williamson for president. No. Man, we could really use your voice out there in the progressive causes. Why are you always talking about David Brooks? And I, I knock doors for candidates. I, I will phone bank for candidates. I will raise money for candidates. I've done all those things. I will volunteer on good causes, which I do. I will 
teach Sunday school, which I do. And I will do photoshops of glorious things. And I'll write all kinds of stuff about all kinds of people. And I'll write movie reviews. But you know what I'm going to do with, in addition to all of those things, I'm going to be the only person in this fucking country who has taken David Brooks seriously as a threat to democracy for 15 years and, and has had a steady through line for 15 years saying, I'm telling you guys, this is what the Beltway media looks like and smells like, and this is why things are broken. So please continue. This is where you look at the effect, not the cause, and realize, wait a minute, something deeper is going on here. Oh, yeah. The absolute deference that everyone in the Beltway pays to David Brooks is remarkable. It is. It is. Uh, you don't criticize him in public. When you do criticize him, you get audible gasps right. from Mika <gasps> Brzezinski on television. <gasps> you just said David Brooks is wrong. How how could I, you do that? How dare you? Yeah. Yeah. And and that is what is telling to me about David Brooks. Mm -hmm. It's not so much what he says. And oh. to me, he's kind of boring and milk toast. He and so, but he goes everywhere. He has unlimited budget to do whatever he wants. If he wants to go on a $160,000 vacation and write 800 words about it, mm -hmm. the New York Times says, great, write it off. And it is the power that he has is so out of ratio with his talent yes. <laughs> or his output. Right. That something else is going on there. Well, and if, if he were a baseball, if he were a football player, okay, mm -hmm. um, and if he were a place kicker, and that's what he did well. He was a special mm -hmm. teams guy. You know, once in a, once, twice, three times in a game, you got to call him in to do this one thing he does really well, and that's mm -hmm. why we pay him a shitload of money. But he spends most of his time on the bench. No, the thing David Brooks is supposed to do is talk about, and and this is David Brooks really is a proxy for an entire class of pundits mm -hmm. for whom this is true. This is Brett Stevens. This is Michael Gerson. This is Joe Scarborough. Most of the time, this is David Brooks. There's a long, long list. They have no special skills. Their one fucking job is to be able to speak with some authority that I don't have and you don't have because they have special secret insider access to the hearts and minds of the people who are really running things, Blue Cow, and can mm -hmm. tell you what's mm -hmm. really going on inside the Republican Party. Sure, the Republican Party looks crazy on the outside. Sometimes they do crazy things. But on the inside, everything's fine. The, the establishment is firmly in control. Nothing to worry about. Everything's A-OK. -okay. And if it's not A-OK, not -A -okay, then both sides are wrong. And that's it. That's, that is their entire job. That is what David Brooks gets paid more in, in a year than I will see in a lifetime to mm -hmm. do that one job. Twice a week, not five times a week. Mike Royko did five columns a week, twice a week. And for 15 years, David Brooks has never fucking been right once. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. He is he's all, and he's always wrong in the same way. Uh, Michael Gerson is always wrong in the same way. Kathleen Parker, always wrong in the same way. Peggy Newton, always wrong in the same way. And there's this collective um, conspiracy. There's really no other word for mm -hmm. it. Conspiracy to make sure these people never are without a massive media platform to puke out their opinions and are never questioned by anyone and are never in a position where anybody can question them. We're always going to put you across from Mark Shields, who will never ask you anything. We're always going to put you across from E.J. Dion, who knows that his job is over the minute he says, well, David, remember last year when you said the exact fucking opposite thing? That's the last time you ever hear from E.J. Yeah, Dion. Right. I want to know what special powers these people have. Who the fuck do they know? How, what do they have on people? I know why Lindsey Graham behaves this way. <laughs> somebody has right. something on Lindsey Graham. We all know. We all know that somebody's got something that, bad on but, Lindsey Graham. But it's, right. it's, it's exactly the same situation. You have a person behaving completely out of character, doing and saying things that are just unacceptable and weird and, and counter to their character and doing them over and over again. And all of their colleagues sit on their hands and don't say a goddamn thing. And that's, and that's true of the Beltway media. There's a whole cast of people who do terrible, reckless, dumb, asinine things and are wrong and, and pitch the wrong idea and influence millions of people. And there's no check on them. And, and there's no one in power who's to say anything back and to them. Drift Glass, if I could boil down a any given David Brooks column yes. into a few words, it would be uh -huh. the Republican renaissance is just around the corner. Until then, both sides do it. And don't touch my stuff. Right, right. <laughs> and so let me read this one sure, sentence. Sure, sure, sure. Just one sentence from this week's op-ed. Mm -hmm. 
It is no accident that the Democratic candidate with the best grasp of this election is the one running a spiritual crusade. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not an economic redistribution effort. Right. Don't touch my stuff. Right. So he loves Marianne Williamson. Well, he also says that the, the Democratic Party is a secular party trapped in a Lockean prison. <laughs> politics should be separated. <laughs> Democrats believe politics should be separate from faith. Politics should be separated from soul craft. And this is what this is the business he's now. And this is my and I, I keep being confirmed in my theories and literally dozens of people agree with me. And then, you know, five years from now, someone else will notice and it'll become a thing. But there's no place left for people like this to go. Yeah. They have been pitching this both sides, both sides, corrupt, corrupt, both sides, both sides bullshit for so long, ever since the Bush administration collapsed, that that's all they know how to do now. That's that's their only reflex. And now that Donald Trump has come along and proven beyond any doubt that Democrats, liberals, left was right about them all along, and there's only two things for them to do. One. Um, pretend the Republican Party that undergirds Donald Trump simply does not exist. There are no Republican voters in the world. There's no Fox News. There's no hate radio. It's just mm -hmm. Donald Trump versus the Democratic Party. And that's what David Brooks did two weeks ago. He simply made the Republican Party disappear. An entire column about Donald Trump that never mentioned the GOP once, never mentioned the Republican Party once. He's just a singular anomalous figure that came out of nowhere, will disappear into nothing, and has no connection to David Brooks's political party which is a gigantic lie and should have gotten him fired immediately. But the Schulzberger family likes their neoconservative pets. So he gets to keep his job forever. So that's step one. Pretend the Republican Party doesn't exist. Didn't, didn't, didn't create Donald Trump. And so right. that leaves you with only one party to talk about, which is the Democrats. And everything about America that needs fixing must be done by the Democratic Party. And so every time, and I have this in a post I haven't done yet, Every, every column from these people now becomes a letter to Santa Claus. Dear Santa Claus, my name is Davey Brooks. Thank you for bringing me that job at the New York Times where I get to write the same goofy shit over and over again and they still pay me a lot of money. Also, thank you for the new wife to replace the old one I broke. She's working out great. <laughs> <laughs> this year, this year I've been a very good boy. So for Christmas, I would like, this is an exact quote from today's column, Democrats to rebuild the moral infrastructure of our country. Also, I would like Democrats to, and this is an exact quote, lead an uprising of decency. Yeah, that's not too big of an order, I suppose, for Democrats to do. Oh, and everyone on Twitter had a whole lot to say to David Brooks about decency. Like, don't sleep with your with your research yeah. assistant. Well, I, you will not hear me say that. Yeah. Um, what you will hear me say is, you know what? We did that for eight years. Yeah. yeah. It was called the Obama, the Obama administration. administration. Exactly. Remember what happened yeah. to Barack Obama? Remember what you wrote about Barack Obama? That's why memory is the liberal I've superpower. I've been gypped. I've been ruined. Yeah. He I, said, all of he's my really faith in him is over. And, and Jonathan Shate wrote a wonderful column about how no matter what Barack Obama position he takes, he takes exactly the position the centrist wanted to take and the centrist just moved the center. Yeah. So they have something to complain about because they don't care about governing. They care about complaining that everyone else isn't doing a good enough job of doing what they're supposed to do. Right. And you can't do that if one group of people is doing exactly what you want and one group of people is insane and you actually belong to that second group. Yeah. So David Brooks is now getting into the faith healing business because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's no there's no politics for him to talk about anymore. There's nothing to discuss. The Republican Party is a disease. It needs to be eradicated. It needs to be put into a jar and starved of electoral power until it's no more. Well, Drift that Class, is the, Drift Class I, you know, in some respects, David Brooks is smarter than Sarah Palin in that regard then. <laughs> well, because true. I've long said that if mm -hmm. Sarah Palin had simply quit politics and gone the Crystal Cathedral route, you know, mm -hmm. visited Baptist churches and done tours, book tours and t-shirt tours and uh, talked about the the preciousness of life and how yes. great Jesus is to her, blah, blah, blah. She'd be a billionaire. By she now. would be. She would be. She'd be a beloved. She'd, she'd be have, the she next could have her own show. Schlafly. She could have her own books, tours. She could right. be unlimited live audiences that would be as big as Michelle Obama. I am not making that up. No, she'd be the next Phyllis Schlafly. She absolutely she would, be. would be. And she would yep. be set for life. Uh, but she wasn't religious enough for that. <laughs> I think she no. she she recognized no. that that would be faking it, and I don't mm -hmm. think she thought that she could do that. She could fake being actually knowledgeable about politics and government for 
six months, but uh, not about that. Um, no. She probably liked getting her drink on too much. Yeah. Too. Well, there is that. You're living, you're living off, but uh, David in, Brooks in is going the Crystal Cathedral route. Oh, yes. By yeah, loving no, Marianne Williamson, is... by writing books about the third mountain, and, you know, life is just a, a climb to that higher sense of oh, self, no, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I've described his new writing style as pseudo-rabbinical archival. Yeah, right. Which right. is just, you know, scripture tells us, and God was love, and we should all reach out to each other, which are all sentiments I agree with. However, they are always the cover for a criminal hiding from his crime when they come out of the mouths of someone whose primary mission is, please, please don't judge me. Right. Please don't bring up the shit I did in the past. I have no intention of making up for it. I have no intention of apologizing for it. I have no intention of uh, doing, of atoning for it or even admitting it. I plan to keep all the shit that my my all of my shitty columns has bought from me. I'm not going to give anything back or any, give anything up. But now that I'm sitting on a top of a mountain of money and I'm approaching you know the the end of my middle age, I would very much, and that everything liberals said was going to happen has happened, and I and I have been shown to be completely fucking wrong about everything. I'm going to adopt a philosophy where no one is judged, right, <laughs> about anything right. ever, except I'm going to judge the Democrats, right. I'm going to judge them really harshly because it's their job to fix everything. All right, and, and this is a really this yeah. is a no, and I'm not again, I'm, not, I'm talking about the entire media, right. This is a no lose scenario for them because if Democrats don't do what they're told, then these people can say, we told you. Yeah. We told you. No matter no matter how well and they succeed, they're right it's going to be. And Democrats are wrong. Right. And they don't have to hold any accountability for electing Trump, electing yeah. racists, being racist, the racism of Ronald Reagan, tolerating racism in Donald Trump, uh, the do-nothing Congress. They don't have to take responsibility for any of that. They can simply say, and I told the Democrats to do it, and they didn't do it. So I was right, and, and is, they were wrong. Yep. And this is, this is uh, David French. Oh yeah. This is Rick Max Wilton. Boot. This is Tom Nichols, Max Boot. This is, and they all have columns in the New York Times or the Washington Post. They all have access to uh, uh, media platforms a ten thousand times larger than you or I do. Right. And they're all pitching the same woo. Therefore, there is some common agreement at that level that these people will be given platforms, and you will not. Mm -hmm. This is what we. This is the story we in the media want to tell. But and so we're going to give anybody who tells us that. Now, can I add one more thing? One more thing. Yeah, it's a note from Miss Joanne Reed. Yes. Who on Twitter said the following. Has your party moved to too far to the left? Has become an almost robotic question the press asks Democrats. Parenthetically, Republicans rarely, if ever, get asked, has your party moved too far to the right, even as white nationalists flock visibly and openly into the GOP? What's wrong with this tweet, Blue Gal? Uh, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say she's the press. She's the press. However... No Republican is going to go on her fucking show, Drift Glass. That's no, of, oh, of course not. <laughs> of course not. That, that's the point. Yep. Of course no Republican. But she can certainly ask the question with a name attached to it. Well, she can certainly ask. She did. Why? She tweeted it. She said the press. Yeah. And the press is a way of saying, I'm not going to name uh, Hugh Hewitt. Yep. I'm not going to talk about Chuck Todd. I'm certainly not going to touch the third rail, which is the David Brooks rail. Right. I'm not going to torch my career by saying, you know, it's this specific group of largely white conservative men who are the problem. Yeah. I would like to keep my job and I think she should she keep should her job. Keep her she job and she job. should, but, she should protect her job by, by behaving in that I way. Agree. And, and, and tweeting long, it is, is coming as far to the edge as she can. Yeah. As yeah. long as it is, it is a career suicide. Right. To point to the truth and say, this is the truth. And you're a journalist. We're fucked. Yeah. That's the, that is the point. Yep. If you can't call a racist a racist, yeah. then then there's no point in having journalism. If you can't state a fact as a fact, there's no point in pretending. You just said call a racist a racist. And I want to point right. out an article in The Atlantic that came out, I believe, well, it certainly oh. came out in the last two days because it's dated Are August. you going to shatter some of my mythologies that I live no. and die by, Blue Guy? No. Are you going to destroy my- This is by Elena Plot, and uh -huh. it, she went to the Trump rally last night in Cincinnati. Uh -huh. So it came, it's oh, okay. from today. Okay. And uh, she spoke to two women at the Trump rally. Uh, most of the people at the Trump rally are really sick and tired of being called a racist. Yeah, yeah, I, I imagine and, so. And uh, they did not chant, send them back last night out of respect for Donald Trump, who apologized for right. sa them saying that in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. So 
No, we're not. Sure. They said sure. vote them out. They were cl- carefully last night. First of all, they were carefully coached what to chant as they were in Charlottesville. Secondly, did you notice that Fox News cut away after 30 minutes of that rally just in case they started chanting something racist? I did. But uh, this article is how Trump supporters are just t- sick and tired of being called racist because they're not. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. Uh, this woman, Elena Plot, spoke to two women uh, wearing their MAGA hats, Rosanna and Amy. Mm-hmm. And one of them uh-huh. said, look, I'm sick to death of being called racist. I have 13 grandchildren. Four of them are biracial, black and white. Another two of them are black and white. Another two of them are Singapore and white. You think I'm racist? I go and give right. them kids kisses like nobody's business. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then uh, they asked her uh, about the sender back chat, and they said, out of respect for the president, we didn't chant that. We chanted, right. vote them out. All right, fine. Right. Then mm-hmm. uh, they asked about Representative Ilhan Omar of Minnesota. Yeah. And Rosanna said, I don't want her stinking Muslim crap in my country. <laughs> yeah. like, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And Amy chimed in with two magic words, Drift Glass. Sharia law. Sharia law. <laughs> yep. That's it. When I start my garage band, it's going to be called Sharia law, Blue Guy. <laughs> so that's not racist. No. <laughs> Of course not. They don't, and they don't. And you know what? Whatever part of their brain is supposed to draw that connection is just dead. No, it, they don't it just see that as they a don't problem, you know, because they love their Singapore and white. <laughs> That's how she, uh-huh. she's with it. Singapore and white. Yeah. I got Singapore. I got, I got a white. Singapore I got a brown and white there. grandchild mm-hmm. and a black and white grandchild and biracial black. I don't know what mm-hmm. the differences between black and white and biracial black and white, but she's made a distinction between those two. It's important for her to say that. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, Uh anyway, yeah, the, Uh, I don't want her stinking Muslim crap in my country is a perfectly okay thing to say to a reporter out loud Mm -hmm. while supporting Donald Trump. Look, we held it in. I'm sick of being called racist. We held it in all rally. We didn't ask for them to be driven out of the country and go back. We, I've been, it's like putting your belt on at Thanksgiving, okay? Yeah. I cinch it all the way up. I got to let it out. Mm-hmm. I got to let it. And they do. And yeah. they do. And this is why, honestly, um, on this kind of subject, on the on, on this large political un- universe, it is pointless to talk to these people about anything. Yep. Because they their brains are just wired this way, and they're going to stay wired this way forever. They're just not going to ever, they're not going to ever come to terms with the fact, oh God, I am a racist. Yeah. Holy shit, I am a racist. What about, I, I guess I shouldn't have said all those things. Those were all wrong. Um, I'm glad she has a, a whole spectrum of grandkids. I hope they get raised up to become decent Americans who have a clean air and clean water and health care and good schools. And I want all those things for her family. Mm-hmm. But she's a fucking racist. And the fact that she doesn't understand what that word means. other If you're not in a clan hood, burning a cross, then you're not a racist, means we cannot have, we don't understand the same basic vocabulary of being an American. Right. And what American means and what America is doing. I thought, honestly, I thought you're going to ruin my childhood by telling me like Reagan was a racist. I mean, that would just, <laughs> that would just wreck my fucking day. Guess what, Drift Glass? Uh, la, la, bedtime. La, 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 la. <laughs> bedtime yes? for Bonso takes on a whole new meaning when yeah, you realize geez. that he... Spoke to Richard Nixon on the telephone yes. about United Nations representatives in terms yes. of simian shoes yes. and so yeah. forth. Yeah, those monkeys, those monkeys yeah. who don't even wear shoes. Yeah, yeah. Looks like I don't know. I'm going to have to sit here and reevaluate all of the nice things I've said about Reagan over the years. It turns out maybe, and I hate to loop back to David Brooks, but I seem to remember him having a whole shit fit several years ago. Uh, over the Philadelphia, Mississippi speech, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and and someone daring it might have been Charles Blow. I'm not sure. I, it's been it's been a number of years. But a fellow columnist who was currently at the New York Times saying, "No, Reagan was racist," and and uh, and David Brooks just lost his shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and did a whole a whole column on a column on the calumny of it, and how dare he? And he was dragged. I I just stood back and watched the internet just drag him and and bring up. Welfare queens and young bucks and T-bone steaks and 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 uh, welfare. I said welfare queens uh, getting out in, in Philadelphia, Mississippi, to give a speech on states' rights. Going wink, wink, wink to everyone there. Of course, he was playing the race card. Of course, he was a Republican. 
the the fucking Republican. He was an old man at the time, and he goddamn well knew the party he was in, and he goddamn well knew how to get their votes. And the fact that David Brooks would would shit himself over the suggestion that Ronald Reagan was anything other than a glorious God come to earth to save us all is everything you need to know about, about the Beltway GOP. They have this fantasy of this party that they have created in their own heads. And as long as they stay inside the Washington, D.C., New York bubble and never leave and never talk to an actual Republican, they get to get away with it because that's where all the TV cameras are. That's where all the newspapers are. That's where all the the big thinking media corporations are. That's where all the money is. Uh, So they don't need to actually get out in the countryside and verify their theory. They can just fantasize about what the Republican Party would be like if only they were more like me. And everyone on the GOP is a... Ed, uh, is an Edwin Burke reading uh, fiscal conservative who thinks deficits are bad, except that has never been true. And this is the this is that Midwestern joke we made at the very beginning of the podcast, which is there are people who do understand the GOP, who really do, who've been watching them up close for decades, who haven't been wrong about them. Right. And those are the people who actually live here and who've observed up close and written about for years and years and years what to expect in the next election, what to expect from the Republicans this time. And those are the people who are absolutely unwelcome anywhere near a microphone or a camera, anywhere inside the Beltway. Well, and and the whole East Coast elite media system that, you know, this week really stepped in it by suggesting that John Lewis wasn't from the Deep South and Detroit isn't in the Midwest. Right, right. What? You know, he eventually had to delete that tweet, but yeah. um, uh, because he was he was dragged so viciously <laughs> for being mm-hmm. so wrong. Uh, but really, there is a, a disconnect where if you live in that world and your policy is simply, I want the lowest taxes possible for my income bracket, and right. that's your policy, then you can be uh, immune, completely immune to to people that like these women at the Trump Trump rallies. You don't know they exist. David Brooks has never acknowledged that there is a racist base to the Republican Party that doesn't want Muslim shit in their country. Never, never, because it would blow his 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 soft core porn version of Republicanism and and his whole his whole grift his whole lie yeah. is telling the same lie about the republic and, and and all these other guys too have built whole careers whole media empire has been built telling rich idiots in along the east coast that the republican party of the actual country isn't really the republican yeah. party and if you have all that kind of money and you really don't want to hear about what's really going on in this country you can pay for the privilege right. Right. You just keep giving them money. They keep telling me more about those these these sensible centrists who are really there are tens of millions of them. Tell me more about independents and how awesome they are. Tell me more about the the very serious people who are really running the Republican Party. Tell me more how it's going to be fucking Rubio. Right, right. And, and how, how decency goes up in, and morality is really what we need to govern the country. Right. Uh, by which you mean your income tax bracket and right. education level will insulate everyone from. Everyone in your friends group from the real world. Yeah. And when you go into the, you know, tent revival business, (laughs) it's suddenly everyone's to blame. Everyone. It's the culture. It's all of us, Blue Gal. It's we. It's everyone who's equally to blame. And we're all corrupted by Donald Trump. And we're all led astray by this shit. And that's, again, that's the backup to the backup to the backup lie. The original lie was George Bush is great and everything's going great in Iraq and tax cuts will never lead to deficits. That was the that was the earliest mm-hmm. one. And domino after domino, these same clowns have had to come up with a brand new reason why the Republican Party isn't a shitty racist, you know, monster factory. And they finally ended up again in the in the in the in the huckster tent mm-hmm. where they're selling, you know, holy water and ra- and and the fragments of the Reagan true cross and now Reagan's a right. racist. What are they going to do now? Well, they're going to pretend it didn't happen or it doesn't really matter or it's somehow just part of the show. And as long as there's enough money to push these people into the spotlight and keep everyone else out, we're stuck here. This is not going to change. This is why Marion Williamson went, has gone on from being praised by David Brooks and now she's being interviewed by Anderson Cooper and tonight she's going to be on the Bill Maher show because she's the new can- cotton candy. Right. She's the new shiny thing. Although I will and, say to Anderson Cooper's credit, that was a really difficult, mm-hmm. he made it really difficult for her and mm-hmm. he had to, and she deserved it. 
So uh, good for him. That he actually practiced well, journalism during his interview with her. Bless his, bless, as opposed to Brian Williams, who said, "Now, next up, Tom Friedman. <laughs> I'm going to read a lot of Tom Friedman shit." about how the sensible center needs to take control of this crazy socialist Republican party, democratic party to save Merca. Yeah. And I just, at that point, I just click, yeah. I'm sure there's, you know, a, a rerun of Gilmer Pylon somewhere that will do just as well. And won't make me angry, but why is Brian Williams, this, this dope, this complete news reading caricature of a, of a, of uh, an anchor man on at all. Why is he citing Tom Friedman? Why is any of this shit happening? Well, it's because the people who, bankroll the business and who run the corporation what it that way well i did appreciate what you said about lindsey graham oh yeah that the outback steakhouse commercial is how lindsey graham runs his senate committee yeah no rules just right and right yeah and going right and right. going to the right and we're going to go to the right yeah you, you want to uh, and, expand on that a little bit it's it was just well he he uh had democrats uh in the middle of the summer not showing up for his committee hearings mm -hmm. And it turns out Patrick Leahy actually had to be at a family funeral. So, uh, you know, that that embarrassed Lindsey Graham to find that out. But uh, Lindsey Graham feels that Democrats are avoiding his committee in order to not let him uh, continue to lock up children indefinitely. Right. So he decided to pass a bill out of his committee that locks up children, migrant children indefinitely uh, by fiat. Right. And which will uh, die in the house, by the way, which will die in the it house. Will, it will, it's, it will be dead in the house, but right. it will make uh, Ronald, it will make Ronald Reagan, Donald Trump, yeah, uh, perfectly happy and feel vindicated to lock up children indefinitely uh, by crim further criminalizing uh, migrants and asylum seekers. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just wanted to get that bill out of his committee and continue to do his work. Right. Uh, regardless of what the rules were, which is kind of adorable when you consider the extent to which Mitch McConnell uh, abuses power and oh, yeah. violates the rules in yeah. the other direction. So, yeah, uh, yeah this this is uh, what he did. No rules. Just go to the right. And and he had uh, Democrats This is in a committee room. This is in a small yeah. committee room. Everyone's sitting around a table and he's just bulldozing this thing through. And mm -hmm. they're saying point of order. We have to. Nope. But this is unprecedented. Yeah. No, it's not. Well, how about, no, I'm not going to listen to you. And he just took Robert's rules of order, wiped his ass with it and said, we're just right. going to run this committee the way I fucking well want it, run want it. And there's no one to stop me. I mean, we're Republicans. Right. Well, they voted unanimous. The Republicans on the committee voted unanimously. Of course they did. Uh, to support Donald Trump's immigration policies. Mm -hmm. So, hey, uh, we got to do news roundup. Let's Let's roll right into that, shall we? All right. State prosecutors in New York City subpoenaed the Trump Organization for documents related to the company's role in hush money payments <laughs> made to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. Uh, Donald Trump unexpectedly announced this week that he will impose a new 10% tariff on additional $300 billion worth of Chinese imports. And guess what? China has threatened to retaliate. So kiss the Obama boom goodbye. Now, Ronald Trump, uh, Donald Trump is going to sink it. Well, and Christmas is going to be horrible yeah because uh everything you buy in terms of christmas ornaments in terms of tinsel and all that stuff's made in china mm -hmm. and it's going to cost you 25 percent more uh it's gary Cohn, trump's former chief economic advisor said the trade war with china is backfiring and having a dramatic impact on the u.s economy yeah you can see that in the stock market today Hey, you know who's playing with missiles again? North Korea. You know who mm -hmm. doesn't care? Donald Trump. Because his good friend, uh, Chairman Kim, says, uh, I love you. I love you so yeah, much. And they're only mid-range missiles, and I don't care about those. I, uh, right. Yeah, screw that. So, it, you know, this is what passes for diplomacy now. This is, this is our leadership. And here's what passes for oversight. The Inspector General of the Intelligence Community will not investigate how the White House handled the security clearances for Jared Kushner, Ivanka Trump, and other officials, unless Donald Trump gives the okay. Yeah. Michael Atkinson declined the request to investigate the security clearance process by four top Senate Democrats, saying the authority over access to classified information ultimately rests with the President of the United States. Yeah. Now, Donald Trump is an illegitimate, foreign, implanted so-called president of the United States, and yes, we do not have the ability to deal with that. No, we don't. That is not something. Well, we we do. It's called impeachment. 
And yeah. it, the founders, again, repeating this for the thousandth time, I'm sure you've all heard this. They never anticipated that one entire political party, they never anticipated parties, but that was kind of inevitable. Mm -hmm. One entire political party would become a, a complete corrupt shithouse of, of lunatics and assholes who would aid and abet an ov overtly treasonous commander in chief. Mm -hmm. it, just, it just didn't occur to them that that many of their fellow citizens, of their, of their Americans, fellow Americans would turn traitor to their own country. Uh, because Fox News told them to. Um, more than half of House Democrats support launching impeachment proceedings against Trump. That's the tipping point. We're, 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 we are there um, at the place where now it's a majority. Mm -hmm. And now questions about why aren't you proceeding as the majority wishes you to becomes the, um, becomes the baseline for questions about that in the future. The Trump administration, after saying they stopped separating migrant children from their parents, separated more than 900 migrant children from their parents at the U.S.-Mexico border. One man lost his daughter because a Border Patrol agent claimed he had failed to change the girl's diaper, and another had his child taken from him because of a property damage conviction allegedly worth $5. Another man who has a speech impediment had his four-year-old son taken from him because he couldn't clearly answer the Border Patrol agent's questions. These are Gestapo tactics. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. And if you support them, then you're a Nazi. You. Then to yep. hell with it. And you're a fucking Nazi. Uh, two of Mitch McConnell's former staffers have lobbied Congress and the Treasury Department on the development of a $200 million investment in a Kentucky aluminum mill backed by a Russian aluminum company. That's how Mitch McConnell went from relatively poor to really, really rich in a very short period of time. In addition to inheriting his wife's mother-in-law's fortune. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, at Moscow Mitch. Yep. A church in Baltimore kicked Ben Carson off their property after the <laughs> Housing and Urban Development Secretary attempted to hold a press conference without first asking for permission. Yeah. Get off my loan, Ben Carson. How I've longed to say that from my own front yard. <laughs> uh, Moscow Mitch defended his decision to block election security bill and stab his country in the back in a speech on the Senate floor accusing you and me and all of his other critics of engaging in modern day McCarthyism to smear his record. He, he was sad. He almost shed a Your tear. Your party, for Mitch. Your yeah. fucking party, Mitch. Yep. yep. Cash Patel, a Devin Nunez crony. That's all you need to know about yep. him. Yep. Uh, <laughs> tried to disc who tried to discredit Robert Mueller's investigation has been promoted on the National Security Council staff. Yay. It's, it's, there's nothing left to save inside the Republican Party. Really, there's nothing left there. Uh, until today, this is how media pressure actually matters. Until today, John Ratcliffe uh, was Donald Trump's pick for director of national intelligence. Don Ratcliffe was a heavy promoter of the now debunked conspiracy theory of an anti-Trump secret society operating inside the FBI. Uh, and what happened to John Ratcliffe? Well, take it away, President Stupid. This is reading directly from one of his tweets. Our great Republican congressman, John Ratcliffe, is being treated very unfairly by the lamestream media. Yes, Donald Trump is now ripping off Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm. Rather than going through the months of slander and libel, I explained to John how miserable it would be for him and his family to deal with these people. These people being, you know, not traitors, honest citizens who like their, their country back from the traitors who now control it. Um, and this has been a week of just, we're not going to go through them. This has just been a, a shit spray of tweets by a desperate, deranged man in the White House. It's it's too much for me to keep track of, but you flip on the news at any moment and you'll see Donald Trump saying something unbelievably racist, uh, wrong, lying. Just, you know, he's the least racist person in the world. <laughs> I'm the least racist person I'm the in least the world. racist person in the world. Yes, yeah. yes. Yep. Two weeks before Donald Trump was scheduled to give a key energy speech, his billionaire friend Tom Barrick, who also uh, gave big bucks to his inaugural fund, yes, uh, gave an advanced copy of his speech to a middleman who ran it past the United Arab Emirates and Saudi government officials. Later, Barrick arranged for the edits requested by the UAE officials to be added to the speech with the help of Paul Manafort who? and the former campaign uh chairman of the trump campaign during the convention paul manafort uh who's now in jail who's now in jail and uh, witch hunt. uh witch hunt yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah so we we now have the uae and saudis writing our energy policy for money now, and barrack was planning to make a profit off of this uh cooperation with them 
In completely unrelated news, Blue Gal, the no. Senate failed to override Trump's veto of three resolutions blocking arms sales to Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Gosh, go figure. Yeah. We're going to give them nuclear technology. That's, yes, we the, are. that's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. And then we're going to blame the next Democratic president when they blow something up. More than half of the Trump administration's trade war welfare for farmers just went to one tenth of the recipients in the program. Yeah. Let's 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 go talk to some farmers about how they feel about that vote yeah. for four straight days this week, uh, lapping into last week. Donald Trump attacked Elijah Cummings and asserted without evidence that black Balmorians really appreciate what I'm doing. He called Elijah Cummings a brutal bully as Baltimore based district, a disgusting and rat and rodent infested mess that is, quote, considered the worst run and most dangerous anywhere in the United States. No human being would want to live there. This is just standard operating procedure for this rancid racist asshole who leads the Republican Party. And uh, Elijah Cummings' house was broken into uh, early yep. this morning. Yep. And uh, Trump tweeted, too bad. Too bad. Too he's, bad. He's a mobster. He's a, he's a monster. He's a fucking monster. And if you're a Republican, you're a monster too. In totally unrelated news, as chairman of the House Oversight and Reform Committee, Elijah Cummings has initiated most of the investigations into the Trump administration. Last week, Cummings was authorized to subpoena work-related text and emails by White House officials, including Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner. And boy, mm -hmm. are the Republican House members mad that yeah. Ivanka's emails. How dare you? How dare, How dare you, you, sir? How dare you try to read Ivanka's personal? How dare you? They're full of porn. You know they are. Um in in still more unrelated news, Jared Kushner just happens to own more than a dozen apartment complexes in Baltimore that have been cited for hundreds of code violations and provide substandard housing to low income tenants. He's a slumlord. Yes. In still more unrelated news, four years ago, Trump criticized Obama for not doing enough as president to address problems in Baltimore. Trump claimed at the time, because there's always a tweet. There's always a tweet. I would fix it fast. That's why memory is the liberal superpower. Mm -hmm. uh, this week, Donald Trump also attacked Reverend Al Sharpton, calling him a con man who, quote, hates whites and cops. In a five to four ruling, the Supreme Court ruled that the Trump administration can spend whatever it wants on whatever it wants and screw Congress. So $2.5 billion in Pentagon money will now be diverted to start building Trump's stupid wall. I really am wondering at what point corporate America is going to turn the screws on the Republican Senate. Never. Well, if you're a defense contractor uh -huh. who had who does not have ties to Trump personally, Trump Industries. Well, now that's a good point. That's a good, you, that's a valid point. And I, you're I taking not money out of one. my pocket yeah. and I'm yeah. not going to get a contract for the wall because mm -hmm. I'm not connected to Trump. Mm -hmm. You know who the contractors are going to be for that wall are going to be oh. anybody who can put money in Trump's pocket. Oh, Probably yeah. United Arab Emirates is going to build a wall. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. figuring, right? UAE walls are us. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, you remember the, when the Department of Agriculture proposed last week to end food stamps for 3.1 right. million people? This is the, these are the people at the other end of the income spectrum from defense contractors and, and, and people being well given billions of dollars. And well-connected 10% farmers. Yeah. yeah, right. These are poor people who they want to kick off welfare. Uh, the agency, uh, the Department of Agriculture, did not include in its estimates that more than 500,000 kids would also lose eligibility for free school meals. And that is why... Local school districts are just saying, screw it. We're going to make yeah. everybody's meal free because it's too much. It, it costs too much to administer a free lunch program for mm -hmm. poor students. We're just going to make lunch free and we're going to pay for it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's what's happened in our district, by the way. District 186. Yeah. They just said, forget it. We're doing lunch. Once they were no longer required to provide statistics for that to, in order to qualify for Title I. Uh, because mm -hmm. the court said no, that you're you're using a food stamp program to uh, proxy, label yeah. people as poor in order to get more money, and you're not allowed mm -hmm. to do that. They just said, fine, we're just going to make everybody free. Russia targeted the election systems in all 50 states in 2016, and the Senate Intelligence Committee's new report on election interference concluded. Yeah, and we knew that, and and Moscow Mitch isn't going to do anything about it. No. 
I believe a reporter uh, this week, like yesterday, asked Donald Trump, what about that? Did you talk about that when you talked to your boss, Putin? And, and Donald Trump said, none of your goddamn business. <laughs> or words to that effect. Um, yeah, and it will not surprise me uh, if we one day learn in the far, far future that uh, voting rolls had been uh, purged by foreign powers yeah. to the tune of 70,000 votes in maybe three or four key battleground states. Maybe more. Uh, no, no um, one will ever be allowed to look at those voting machines in Pennsylvania. Nope. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Little Beast. Little Beast is an all black cat who is extremely photogenic. Mm hmm. And while it appears that LB has a cat food dispenser bowl in this photo, don't let that fool you. Little Beast really prefers freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you buy pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. And you can visit Little Beast at our Facebook page or website. I'd like to point out that we are still 100% unsponsored by the New York Times. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. I'd like to point out that we are still 100% unsponsored by the New York Times. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is a labor of love, and it's also our job. I'd like to point out that we are still 100% unsponsored by the New York Times. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. I'd like to point out that we are still 100% unsponsored by the New York Times. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, our PayPal, Patreon, postal address, all the P's are there at proleftpod.com. I'd like to point out that we are still 100% unsponsored by the New York Times. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drop Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties wonder how Roger Stone will ever manage to be Director of National Intelligence from jail. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018. DJ.